what a game of football can do and bring joy to people. That was, um, that was pretty special. Rochester, where the hell's Rochester? People say, where are you from? I say, I'm from just south of Echuca. Because everyone knows where Echuca is. <laughs> Few people know where Rochester is. Because it's so small, everybody just knows everybody, you know? An hour out of Bendigo on the Northern Highway and about 20 minutes south of Echuca. It's well noted for its floods, <laughs> unfortunately. I went to school here and I taught in the town for probably 35 years. And it's a real sense of community. Everyone had each other's back. Very close. We all seem to get behind each other and work things out. It's got three pubs in it. Like, what small town has three pubs? Town of around about 3,000 people, but it's always battered above its weight. We grow up in Rochi, and you know you're going to play for Rochi Footy Club. People just didn't expect to see a club compete so well like we did on, on weekends. If you're involved in sport, I'll tell you what, you know the name of Rochester. Rochester, a small town with a big presence. 150 years ago, a group of 40 gathered at the tidy Rest Down Hotel to form the Rochester Football Club. The town and club have been inextricably linked ever since. In its early years, the club played against other district towns and Echuca-based teams. In 1913, Rochester joined the GVFL with instant success before moving to the Bendigo League in 1915 for more favourable financial and travel terms. The club battled away with little success in a major league until the mid-1950s, when two club administrators, Jack Anderson and Jack Green, hatched a bold plan to lure reigning VFL Premiership captain Noel McMahon to the club in 1957. It was an idea as audacious as it was impactful, immediately setting the club on a path to eight consecutive grand finals and an unlikely journey full of ups and downs. This is the story of the Rochester Football Club, home of the locals. Some of my early football memories are around the time when Noel McMahon was appointed. Someone who could captain a VFL side and then turn up at Rochi and captain coach them the next year. I found that fascinating. It was surprising that they were able to attract him here because they won the premiership and he was captain of Melbourne the year before. It'd be probably like getting Max Gorn out of downtown, wouldn't it? Like it'd be massive if you can sort of imagine the buzz it would create. He seemed to be very easy to approach around the town. He fitted in very well. Mum and Dad just said that the buzz around the place for that scenario was just utter excitement. Before a game, uh, the room would just fill up completely and they'd be outside with supporters trying to listen to Noel's address before we went out on the ground. I've seen photos of the crowd at the QEO there and it was just phenomenal. It was eight deep, you know, so the atmosphere would have been fantastic. Here in 1958, grand final was won, and the Shire Hall was packed for a week. It was the first premiership. It certainly created a lot of excitement. Came back to the town hall, and the place was ran amuck with uh, supporters. I think I came into the Shire Hall with a cigar in my mouth. <laughs> One of the stories that I've heard Noel tell in 1956, when Melbourne won the premiership against uh, Collingwood. It was after that grand final win. He had to catch a tram and go down to 3AW and do an interview and nobody hardly knew him on the tram. Back to the MCG, got to the rooms, and there was a sign up on the wall saying, no, we've gone to such and such a pub to have a drink. <laughs> so, our first premiership here, he couldn't walk through the crowd. There was that many people patting him on the back and saying what a wonderful job he had done. So the whole community was behind him. He said the difference was unbelievable between what the VFL was, uh, winning a flag with Melbourne, to actually winning a flag here at Rochester in 58. Some of his comments were, it was the best movie ever made, you know. But to play in eight grand finals in a row and win four, it was fantastic for a small town. They just kept talking about the, the success of the place, how good they were. And the Bendigo League, um, the gates, 
for the finals was just incredible. As far as I remember, um, it was a record. Financially, the, the league was really set up with uh, Rochi being so successful. At the end of the 71 season, there was a meeting up here in our, in our change rooms and the whole town was there, his choppers. A motion was put that we leave the Bendigo League and apply for permission to play in the Golden Valley League. Whilst they were in the Bendigo League, uh, Rochester used to basically attract the biggest crowds all the time to their games, but the gate money would go back to the league and then get distributed amongst all the clubs. So Rochester was basically propping up a lot of clubs in the Bendigo League. And in the Golden Valley, you keep your home gate, you know, and that was a big thing. We were the only club whose gate receipts increased, but our revenue decreased. And it was almost unanimous the vote was to leave. But unfortunately, the uh, powers to be decided they wouldn't grant us a clearance to the Golden Valley. So we had to stand out of football for 12 months. So we voted to do that. So that meant a lot of players left and went elsewhere. Melbourne players went back to Melbourne and we didn't see any of them again. There was a few players that didn't come back that they had counted on coming back. I was certainly disappointed and thought, well, this is going to take some time to recover. Here's this successful football club that had played in so many grand finals, had so many wonderful players, wasn't going to be playing football for 12 months. Pretty hard to get your head around, but we thought this was the only way forward. It would have been a pretty worrying time for the club, I'd imagine. There's no way to foresee how quickly you will recover. We never ever thought that we wouldn't recover. We were always positive we would. We're a very positive community. It created a new atmosphere. It took a long time for the new atmosphere to, to become a winning atmosphere. When we started again, I reckon there was probably only four players return that had played senior football. Like there were times when, in the bad days, we were winning very few games. We didn't have much fun on the ground, but we had a hell of a lot of fun off, off the ground. In 1974, I had a late start to the year at Hawthorne through an injury that I'd suffered uh, the previous year. And I had a chat to them and I'd said, look, I've got a girlfriend, uh, she's from Rochester. Can I get a clearance to Rochester just to play out half a year? Came here and played the last half in 74. Uh, been here ever since. Not bad for only coming for six months. You know, it was just the, the feeling around the town. It was a welcoming town and a great place. I didn't play much junior football. I had trouble with my knees. I couldn't get a game in 78. I played a few games. Then 79, I had a fairly good year and then played seniors in 80, 81 and 82. 81 and 82 were very lean years. We knew we were going to get beaten, but let's try our hardest, but let's have a really good time off the field. Then I coached the reserves whilst I was still playing senior football. Became the senior coach in 1982 and 83. There was a lot of talk around the town. We need to get out of this league. We need to go to a minor league. A lot of us players felt that you don't change leagues when you're on the bottom. You change when you're on the top. We had lots and lots of discussions with the committee at the time. We said, no, we'll hang in, we'll hang in. It'll come good, it'll come good. We were positive it would. Now, it took a long time for the club to get momentum back in such a good major league. We were in Melbourne zone back then. They asked me down and I went down and, and trained and had nine years down there. Dave was an absolute pleasure to coach. He was just a step ahead of what was happening in GV footy at that stage. And it was great to see him go directly from winning a best and first at Rochi when I was coaching to playing the very first game the next year with Melbourne in the VFL slash AFL. To Williams, David Williams into the open goal. Put it through. Our forward line. McCann tries to fist it away. But here comes David Williams and kicks from 40 metres. A beautiful drop punt for a goal. Marked down there by Campbell, but Williams into the open goal. Melbourne further in front. At the end of um, 1996, the then president, um, the John Wendell, who's since passed away, but John came and saw me at my place and said, Look, Rob, I think we're probably looking at going back to the Kyabram League, what's your thoughts? And I said, well, gee, I don't reckon we, we should be, but, and he said, well, we need a president, would you like to take over the president's role? Because he said, I can't do it. He said, I can't get the right people here. And I said, look, I'll have a think about it. And thinking, no, I wouldn't do it. And my wife, Jan, said to me, well, we've got two young boys. Um, where would you like them to actually play footy when they grow up? And I said, well, I'd definitely prefer them to play the best standard. She said, well, you've got no choice. You become president. 
came in from Vermont in 1988 as a 16 year old. I always wanted to come in here just to try and play the best footy that I could. First six years, I think the club just turned around and um, we had a, a lot of success. In 89, when we made the, the grand final for the first time, which was a pretty quick turnaround, the tears in some of the locals' eyes leading up the week to the grand final, just saying, Rob, we can't believe how, how's this, you know, we never thought this would happen again. He goes down towards the pocket, Williams on his chest. Lucky enough to play in the 88 grand final. Good looking kick, that's a magnificent kick. And that, unfortunately, that was my last game that I played because pre-season uh, training mishap, I jarred my knee and had to have a knee reconstruction. I went down and saw Dave and I said, look, what do you think you're going to do with your footy from here on in? Do you want to come back? Like, you know, we, we've played in the grand final in 89 and 90. Yeah, in 91, we've got a few injuries. We're, we're struggling a bit, but it'd be just great to have you back. For the years that I was down in Melbourne, I always had those aspirations of coming back and, and coaching Rochi. <laughs> when Dirty come back to the club in 92, it was, it was a massive buzz and we we're just on. We were just on right from the word go. And you can just tell the way we trained, we were going places. Yeah, well, I come back halfway through 91 and then was appointed in 92, which was exciting. I just loved him. Like, he was hard, but very caring, I thought, as well. Yeah, it would have been in awe of him. I mean, someone who's been played under Ron Barassi, John Northey, knows a little bit about it. Just to play under Brass was just legendary. Yeah, I just loved the honesty. He had no hesitations and made no apologies for the way he went about it. And I've, I've taken a lot of those scenarios into my life or into my coaching. Rochester are really going to have to work hard today if they uh, expect to take that cup home with them. To lead the club in 92 to a grand final is a great thrill. My most vivid memory is the ground conditions. So the day was the wettest game footy I've ever played. It was horrible. And the players, they had to circle around to the goal square to get on the ground. I remember Tate was warming up and Dirty said, right, we we're going to run through. So we listened to him and ran through where they were kicking. So it was on from the start. Hello, it started already. And Dirty thought it was a good idea. Not many others did. And next thing, big Daxi there, coach, was chasing Dirty and everyone thought it was going to be on. He was, he was nuts, but we loved him for it. The ball in the lake. Who, what are they going to do with it here? It's water polo. Never before have I ever seen, you know, where you could hardly see the boundary line and the ball was actually floating and it was still in play. Play on to the up fire. Picked up here by Alders. She was an arm wrestle all day. To win the grand final, especially, you know, in the wet by two points. Well, it had been 30 years. Just an unbelievable feeling for the town. The next day we get, we get a, a truck which with the trailer and you parade around the town and everyone's cheering you. You, you feel the king for a week, you know. That week was huge and I had the 21st birthday party the next Saturday night. After such a long period of, of no success, it was an amazing, amazing day. We knew it would happen and it happened in 92. Finally got back. I often think back and think, well, what it was like for Noel McMahon, what he told me about 1958. I said to him, 92 must have been very, very similar. And Noel McMahon said, except your party didn't last a week. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it went pretty close. <laughs> One of the best weeks of your life. I just was so happy for everyone that had been involved that our vision had eventually come true that we'd gone through the hard times, and we'd come out the other side, and we knew we were going to be successful from there on. Uh, the siren sounds the start of the 1993 Grand Final. Rochester and Shepparton. Can Rochester make it two premierships in a row? In 1993, we were in front at every siren, including the last. Probably going to be a Rochester premiership. Only just a few seconds to go. Shepparton has to score now. Greg Freer bounces the ball. Shepparton, can you do it through Gallagher? It's picked up by Shepparton. There she is. And, uh, and everybody was up jumping around celebrating and running out onto the ground and then what, what the hell's going on? 
I remember the last siren went and I was going like this, thought we'd won and went to shake my opponent's hand and he said, oh, hang on, hang on, there's a free kick here. <laughs> That was supremely disappointing. Heartbreak, heartbreak. That was devastating, yeah. But anyway, what do you do? We'd been beaten in grand finals and it was really upsetting and, buddy, and it kicks your ass in and, you know, you feel sorry for yourself. After grand finals, you think, geez, I can't do, I can't go on with this if this guy's not with us or this guy's not with us. Dave was getting paid, but when he'd come to us and say, we need such and such a player, and we'd say, well, Dave, the budget may not allow for that. They said, yes, it does, because I'll just take a cup. Because they had the attitude that we only had so much money. So if we save that for the players, it made us more successful. And it was the best move I ever did. Dave would drop off his coaching fee to get a player here to make sure that the club kept going. Like the Tank McPhees and the Robbie Millers and the Simon McCase, they played for nothing, you know, hardly, compared to what they could get. Everyone wanted to be, become a part of it, you know? And then within two months, that guy's signed up and that guy's committed. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start dreaming again. And you start, you know, thinking about the next year, you know? 99 come around and we had a very good side. Coming through there hard was Chris McCarty. Oh, it's a target spot and the boys are into it at the full position. That was one of the finals when we went in. I was really confident we were going to win that. We were that far in front halfway through the last quarter. We celebrated from then. The memories you get from it, like, I'll never believe you. And you've always got that with the guys that played that day, the people around that day to celebrate a great Rochester victory this afternoon. Sparks comes in and has put it straight over the goal of Pye's head. The Tigers celebrate. And uh, Dave Williams knows he's got another premiership in the Rochester town. It was a bit of a relief because the others were all, all male biters, you know. There it is. Nine oh, premiers of the Rochester Football Club. And uh, i tell you what, big supporting crowd here for Rochester are going to town. At the celebrations that night, I sat down on my own for probably half an hour and just, um, just sat down and... <sighs> the population of the small town, it's a struggle. That word struggle, it's such a struggle for us. But the sense of achievement, when we do reach that pinnacle, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's hard to describe. That camaraderie and that success and all that, all the money in the world, just can't buy that, you know? Uh, the joy on people's faces, like in that crowd, like what a, what a game of football can do and bring joy to people. It's um, yeah, quite bizarre, yeah. That was, um, that was pretty special. We always had the attitude that with our recruiting, you'd always try and recruit two or three gun players instead of recruiting six, say, B graders, because you're going to be given those other three spots to your juniors. Brings back the importance of the locals, doesn't it? You know, you nurture the locals, and that'll eventually repay you. Because the young kids, they'll, they'll never let you down. They'll always give you their heart and soul, and they'll never give up. The footy club is one part of the community. And when we're recruiting players, we always took the community into account. Over the years, we didn't make too many mistakes. Elliot Barnett, I think he'd come in 205. Bowie was a bloke that we sort of knew basically because of the Bendigo Pioneers connection we had with a number of our kids playing Pioneers. Straight away, he was someone you wanted to be around and just an awesome fella and a bloody good footballer. I wanted to make sure, I was never a club hopper. I never wanted to, to play for the money, as people sort of say. Uh, my son actually came through our junior teams, like most people that played with Fudgy. From there, he was drafted by North Melbourne. He was on North Melbourne's list for four years. He then played with North Ballarat in the VFL for one year and came back to Rochie in 2007. 
Ash is the best outside running player, without a doubt, the best we've ever had. And he won his first best and fairest in 2007 and finished up winning five. Towards the end of that 2007 year, it wasn't, wasn't great. We weren't playing that well. The success we'd had in the previous few years wasn't very good. The club approached me four weeks out. We went over the social rooms and they asked me the question, did I want to coach again, which I said yes. The discussion was, Dave, we think we've come to a situation where we think we might advertise the senior coaching role. If you want to coach next year, you're going to have to apply for the job. So you don't have to be Albert Einstein and realise, you know, it was time to go. It wasn't getting the message through properly anymore to the younger ones coming through. We were finding it hard to get seconds players to play, etc. Times had changed a little bit. You know, a lot of people say that I was too hard on players and whatever, and I probably lost a few players here and there. Well, is there any other way with me? Best coach by my life I ever had, and one of the best persons I've ever met in football, and it was, it was bloody, yeah, for me, it was, it was tough. Looking back at it now, it was the, the guys needed a fresh face. Time was up, yeah. There was a feeling of sadness that the time had finished for Dave at Rochi, and there was a feeling that, hey, why in the hell did put Rochi Footy Club do that to Dave? It would have been a hugely hard decision for them to make, you know, and they made the courageous decision, and I think they made the right decision. His 15 years of contribution to Rochi Footy Club as a coach and his time as a player, it was just absolutely enormous. The 2008 season, we had just had a switch in coach. Daniel Schmidt, who was playing at the time, stepped up uh, with Clint Whitshead to, to lead the team. Coming on to Shepard and Deacon Reserve, it's the Rochester Tigers, led out by their captain, Dean Moon. I don't think 2008 was expected. Seymour, without a doubt, were red hot favourites to win their fourth premiership in a row. At the club, we had a big, big job to do trying to beat Seymour. They were a really dominant team, filled full of stars. The start of the grand final, 2008. Seymour, can they win four? Rochester, can they stop them? Coverage with the kick. Bowen, one grab, two grabs. Kick off the boot is good. There were so many good players that day. You know, Sam O'Brien kept the leading goal scorer for the year to one or two goals. With the ball, came out Watson. He's played beautifully at the moment. Ash Watson, 40 plus touches in the middle. It was just a fantastic team effort. Oh, terrific mark by Hardy. I'll tell you what, if that's a magnificent goal. Eight rounds, oh, bang! Here's Elliot Bowen, he runs onto it, he's a left footer, he's running right into it, it's a goal. And Elliot Bowen kicked seven goals in that game. Here's a chance now for Elliot Bowen, can he get there? He does! We had the wind in the last quarter, but we were still 30 odd points down up against a team that just needed to hold off these young kids. It's in, it's through, it's a goal. I'll tell you what, is he excited? Pointing the crown, so it's sh right from the Seymour crown. Throws the ball up. Just three points to the favour of Seymour. Big fist comes from the Tigers. They'll go forward from Watson. Bowen will run onto it, takes it on the bounce. He tries to curl it around and smooth it. Dean Moon, the skipper, a snap on goal from Moon! Yes! The Tigers have hit the front! Dean Moon! Oh, what a goal! The Tigers crowd have gone up. Absolutely berserk. It's a, it's a win for Rochester, 99-96. Seymour, 13-18-96. Rochester, 15-9-99. And one of the great grand finals of Gunnett Valley history. And I'll tell you what, man. They were red-hot underdogs, you know, and to win it, like, they're the ones you want to win. Yeah. It was a Cinderella story. Yeah, it was hard to take. It was hard to take. Yeah. I know that's wrong, but um, natural... Emotion, I suppose. It was an amazing feeling how they actually physically got over the line that day. Absolutely outstanding performance by Rochester. Yeah, but I was I was happy for the guys. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to be my last game. It was a great stage of my life. I had two boys. One was uh, eight. One was six, and they understood footy then, and and what yeah, what what it meant. When that siren rang and them kids running out and all over you, and it was it was bloody uh, it was terrific. Who were we? Were just in that team. There was probably 18 local kids that had grew up in Rochester, that had gone to the school, and lived in the town. And it's going to rock and roll in Rochester tonight. And won a GV premiership.
Since its last premiership in 2008, Rochester's resilience has been tested with the town experiencing major flooding events in 2011 and 2022. Despite this, the club has continued to be a competitive force in the GVFL, being recognised as the AFL Community Club of the Year in 2023. The Rochester Football Club has been the heart and soul of the community for 150 years. But it's not the accolades or premierships that makes this club so important to the locals. I think the smaller the clubs or smaller the towns, the, the closer people are, you know, because they have to rely on each other. Probably our weakness becomes our strength. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I reflect on landing at Rochester. I was born, you know, in Mildura and moved to Bendigo as a young kid. You know, I live in Echuca. Uh, I still call this place my home club, my hometown. And it's a very easy club to be loyal to and a very hard club to leave, you know. Met my wife at the club. The kids now play here. Like coming here on a Saturday, Tuesday night, Thursday night, and great feeling to be involved with a community club like we've got. Quality people, seeing what people get out of the footy club, having family memories. Oh, yeah, I'll be hoping and saying it. Besides my family, it's the most important thing that's been a part of my life. You look back and, I, and people say, oh, you've, you know, you've been here since heaven a day and you've done this role and you've done that, you've done, you've done a good job. And I sort of tend to brush it off, but at quiet moments I do say, yeah, I'm proud of that.